I'm back. Today we're gonna to do a paper cut for Chinese New Year. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're gonna to be working on a piece for Chinese New Year. It's coming up September, 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 starting February 12th for 2021, the year of the ox. Now, Chinese New Year is a long standing tradition in, in uh, China and throughout most of the world. Uh, most people, a lot, there's a lot of celebration around this time. Uh, this is also the bringing of spring. Now, I did cover uh, the story of Chinese New Year. I did that in a previous video, so you guys can check that out by clicking the link. You definitely wanna learn the story of Neon, which is in the in the video over there. So I wanted to come up with a new project for my class. Now, last year we did a ceramics piece where you guys were making coins and the red envelopes for luck and fortune cookies because while they're an American invention, I did think that it would be fun to make. Now, for the year of the ox, the story goes that the ox is the second of all zodiac animals. According to one myth, the Jade Emperor said the order would be decided by the order in which they arrived at his party. The ox was to be the first to arrive but was but the rat had tricked the ox into giving him a ride then just as they arrived the rat jumped down and landed ahead of the ox thus the ox became the second animal all right so i want to get to today's project so today's project is we're doing a paper cut so for the paper cut started this piece off in our sketchbook so let's get into how this is made now for this project, there was a lot of usage in drawing and researching prior. Now I wanted to find a picture that was easy to illustrate myself so I could quickly draw it out in, uh, in my sketchbook and then taking that sketch and what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer it to another sheet of paper. Now for me, the sketchbook paper that I use is relatively thick and I could use that and work just fine. But I wanted to go with something sturdier, so I'm picking a watercolor paper. Now to get the watercolor paper to see the image through the paper, through the watercolor paper, at first you're gonna to need to retrace it. So using a nice thick Sharpie line, doesn't have to be that one of those giant fat markers, or uh, but you definitely wanted to do something more than a thin marker. Trace the line of the, of the shape that you're working on, overlay that with the watercolor paper and then trace it with a light source behind it. Now me, I'm using a light table. Now if you don't have a light table, a window inside, um, Holding your paper up to a window and retracing it that way works just fine. Now, once you've taken your design, you're gonna take an X-Acto knife, carefully now, people, you're going to cut out the interior of the shape. Now, for me, I've done a lot of graffiti work, so trying to figure out where certain lines should connect to one another, I'm basing that off of graffiti research that I've done prior. If you need to see more stuff on graffiti, you guys can check that up out in the corner as well. Now, once I've removed that center section of my image, I then ha now have the sections of the shadow box uh, template design that we're working on here. Now for this paper cut, and I, I'm interchanging shadow box and paper cut because you could do this for both and you can expand upon the, the, the design here. What we're doing is we're taking elements and objects and putting them on the back page, which I'm also using again, another piece of watercolor paper. I want that nice sturdy paper. So as I'm gluing stuff down to it, that glue doesn't warp the paper too bad. Granted, it will warp a little bit, so just uh, have some binder clips ready to keep the papers flat. Which is why I use some uh, binder clips around my project so that I can try and get it as flat as possible because this is definitely not flat in the middle. But hopefully when I let the clips off, it'll work a little better. Now on that back panel, we're gonna go ahead and start putting in our elements that we want to showcase. Now, this being the year of the oxen and it being an earthly symbol, I definitely want to showcase earth elements on it. So we have the different flowers, which I did tag. Uh, I took some pink paper out of, out of a cabinet, folded little um, squares of it up and cut little uh, flower petals out of it. Then taking a slice of green paper, cutting up bamboo strips to glue the, glue the bamboo strips on there too. So you then have, um, the pink paper, which I tagged with some red paint and a little bit of gold paint. So I get all the color spectrums in there that I wanted. I definitely wanted the reds, the golds, the pinks, and the greens. I can do that all by putting a little bit of paint in there with it. And as I'm gluing these things down, I did want to cover up enough of the background element. So I don't really have a lot of white showing back there. And it's really based upon the color. So the color's nice, vibrant, and poppy. Now, as I'm going over this, sometimes you might want to grab your uh, stencil outline 
lay it over the top to make sure that you're covering everything up properly. If not, then uh, you know what spots you need to hit a, a little bit harder on. Now, don't think about all of the pieces need to be glued just to the back and you have this clean cut on the top. That does look very nice. What if you can bring some of those elements out from that background into the foreground as well? Now we're starting to change up some of the, the levels that we're, that we're showcasing in the image and that makes a nice, uh, more well, and that makes a better well-rounded piece. Now to finish these pieces up, after I've taken my stencil piece and laid that on top, put some glue, glued a few more elements on top of there, framed it all up with a piece of backboard, which I've got extra mat in my room. I laid down some mat board and then put a nice frame piece of mat board on top of it just to finish it off, glued everything together using binder clips to hold it down right now, which is why I've got the binder clips on it. And once this thing dries, I can take the binder clips off and we got a nice finished piece. Now, if you had, if we had some extra time and you want to build this up and make this like a 3D uh, box, you could totally do that. I'm still debating on how I want to approach this assignment with uh, my students and how far we're going to push it. I've also got to keep in mind that most of my students are virtual students and because they're virtual, they're not going to have access to the mat cutter and all the extra mat board that I've got in my room uh, that we use to make different little mini boxes and, and pagoda huts out of. But overall, I'm really happy with the way everything came out. I'm just you know, stoked that I, that I found the, that's upside down. There we go. I'm, I'm stoked that this, uh, this project came out really well. I, I do really like uh, the, bull, the bull, to me it's a bull, but it's an oxen. Uh, how the design came out, lots of colors and designs and details inside of it. Just a nice fun piece, something that you guys can do inside the classroom or out, and it comes out really well. Bye. 
Now, let's go ahead and take care of the homework as we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. I'm trying to get our message out there to as many people and students as much as possible. Uh, don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hand downs in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.